experience makes the best of experts in any given field. In today's program, we have Teddy Oyo, the founder of Kisumu House of Photography. Teddy, karibu sana. Thank you. So package for me your experience in the media industry. Well, the experience is both, <laughs> I would say, both challenging and exciting at, uh, at the same time. Mm -hmm. But uh, for me, my journey and experience has been a long one. However, in, within a short time, but long in terms of experience, um, I was not to be in the media industry mm. to start with, because when I finished, was, uh, well, I had an inspiration, mm -hmm. but when I finished uh, uh, my high school, um, it took quite long before I got into this space. Um, I finished my high school in 2006 mm -hmm. and I joined um, college in 2011. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine that span. Within that period, um, I was just doing some other things but are not, were not related to, to media or anything back in the village. So uh, it has been a long journey from that time to where I am now. I went to Kenya Institute of Mass Communication. I did um, broadcast journalism. Um, my experience and exposure in media uh, came at the time when I went for internships uh, in one of the media, uh, several me me mainstream media houses. From there, I came and stinted a bit. Where the twist came is when I finished then joined the mainstream media, then I didn't last long because there were issues within. They were cutting down uh, okay, <laughs> on okay. staffing, that's, that's scaling down their staffing. So <laughs> it really disoriented me. I stayed out for almost six months. Then, funnily enough, mm. I got an opportunity to work in an hotel. Okay, okay. Yes. I worked in an hotel. So when I was telling my friends I'm working in an hotel, the colleagues or um, oh. classmates, mm. they were like, Hotel? What do you do in yeah, hotel? What are you doing at the hotel? <laughs> yeah. So um, I would not explain much. I would just tell them I'm working in an hotel because that was my first and unimagined experience mm. or diversion of a career, mm. a unique one. You imagine you having aspiration to work in a media house. Uh, you have been on radio because I was on radio, local radio, and you know the village and everybody. They already know you. Know you. <laughs> <laughs> then you want to explain now I'm cooking or doing something because yeah. them they don't know any other aspect of hotel apart from offering food services. So I kept it silently. What I used to tell them, that nowadays I'm not on air, I'm producing content. So okay, you can't hear okay, me. I, I had to lie them. a yeah. lot of time because they used to hear me. I had a show radio in a local radio station, a show in the evening. So everybody would be listening to me. So all of a sudden they are not hearing that kind of thing. So what do I have to do? I have to keep, you know, the hold was this. You don't, can't, can't tell them anything. They know you as a journalist. They know you as a media personality. And they brag in the village about it. Our son, our son. When you go, say hi to us. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so you can imagine that kind of experience. So uh, from there, um, I began accepting that it's real that I'm not in media. Mm. I'm now a table. But in the hotel industry, the good thing was I was in the Department of Communication, Digital Marketing, and PR. Okay. So it, still, I did not divert much in terms of uh, my, what I do, but it's only the sector that changed. So I stinted there for probably, okay, I can gauge it for around four years. Uh, at some point, I left to go work somewhere, then I came back to the hotel again. Then from the hotel, now I, 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 I now shifted back now to media. So that's 
journey yeah it's, where a, I am it's now. quite a colorful journey i might say uh, yes so what sparked the interest towards your media and communication uh, career i used to have a person i was looking after like a person who was my inspiration in media I used to be in one of the uh, radio stations as i was growing up so Every time um, I used to love, let me just say, this is a story of every other journalist, of every other person in media. They, they, they must have had somebody who was inspiring them to be what they are. If at all they didn't become uh, journalists or media personalities by accident. <laughs> if at all they didn't. By accident, if they okay. didn't, uh -huh. If they didn't come by accident, mm. then they must have been following somebody who was inspiring them. Yeah. So when I was growing up, I used to listen to a lot of radio. And my dad, my dad was, uh, is an electronics person. Mm. He, pre he repairs uh, radios. So we had a lot of um, interaction with radios. So we loved, we loved, we loved it. So all along, it was just radio, radio, radio. Then uh, that inspiration came. So when I finished high school, well, I did not go through the, 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 the I did not uh, go through the, uh, I mean, the job. So I had to wait for me to get some money to go through the, the, the college. college yeah. Then uh, opportunity, when the opportunity came, I said, now, I will just make it. I got into class with people who had graduated just the other yeah. year. <laughs> so we were <laughs> two of us true. in class. Uh -huh. But again, uh, the inspiration or our, our star was, uh, we, we, we wanted our star to shine. Mm -hmm. We were two of us who were older in that class because mm -hmm. we finished the same year mm -hmm. with that gentleman. So we used to tell ourselves that, uh, let, let's shine here. And we used to do it. I, my first radio experience was within the, uh, within the school uh, where I was hosting a show. So you see, it was uh, already picking up. Yeah, so I had an exposure. I was hosting a show uh, every week. Uh, then from there, when I went for internship, I was also, my first internship was, of on, course, on radio. On yeah? radio. Mm -hmm. Then now another one was also on radio. So uh, it was so much on Your radio. Your part was just on radio. radio, radio. I, let me just say it was purely radio. Okay. Uh, then, um, you know, if you are in radio, you can only be radio. You see, these other aspect of media, like, uh, let's say, TV production, and all, they have other, a lot of other things you can do with that skill. But radio, you are just radio. So uh, it was kind of challenging for you to transition to anything. If you are not working in radio, what are you doing? What are you doing? True, true, true. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So um, that's what I can say inspired me into uh, being in this industry. Mm -hmm. It has been a very, a very interesting journey, I must say. Mm -hmm. I've interacted with a lot of people. I've, inter I've uh, networked enough, but not enough for the future. But I, I, for this far, I've said... I can say I've really, I've really met quite and made friends. And you seem to have yeah. so much love for media. Yes. So uh, how intentional must one be in order to pursue a, a, a particular path? You pursued media as your particular path. So how intentional must one be to pursue their own path? Very much intentional. Uh, if you want to be a chef, start interacting with chefs. chefs. Mm be in the spaces where food is being talked about. Uh, avoid things that are food related. In that manner, you are preparing yourself for the game. If you media, understand and be in those spaces. Because those opportunities, or rather you can be skilled, but opportunity might not be there. But how do you get opportunities? Interact with people within those spaces. So that's uh, number one, intentional. Intentional in terms of skills acquisition. Be, know what you, know very well what you want to do. You know, after having that skill, the opportunity will just fall in place. But don't wait for opportunity for you to get skill. Create that skill, then the opportunity, when the opportunity comes, you now just fit in.
I so that. yeah, I so that. just be very intentional. For me, I was very intentional with what I wanted to do. Like I was in st- I was in a tail industry, but I was still doing. Yeah, you are still focused on media. on on media, mm-hmm. and uh, the fact that I was also in the, in the 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 hotel I was working in was also in the setup where I interned and done media. So this generally still interacted with me. We still got along. I still knew what was happening in the in the media spaces around me, so I did not lose it. You see, some people when they divert, they lose even the contacts, the networks, even the skill, the inspiration around what they wanted to do. For me, I did not lose it. I used to even when I'm off job, I'm doing photography and media <laughs> content for other clients. There are people who didn't even know that I'm a Yeah, they didn't. Yeah, and uh, let's speak about the Kisumu House of Photography. Wow. Uh, You've talked about radio with all, so much love. <laughs> so, what is the genesis of Kisumu House of Photography? Um, it's a short story. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, when I started my, 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 my now my okay, just doing media mm-hmm. or doing content creation in terms of photography. Mm, I used to call myself Small Ted. Small? Ted Photography. Small Ted Photography. Yes, that Why? was the Why first name. Why should you name. call yourself Small Ted? Because there was a time I was called by, I was attending a state function. I used to write, I used to blog a lot. Mm-hmm. Where Those times when blogs were very, local blogs, you know Facebook was very subtle in terms of, people used to read blogs. So I used to write blogs for different events, for different people, I review personalities. Then my blog was called explorekisumu.co.ke. The Explore Kisumu was about to tell people about people in Kisumu, people around, what they're doing, the places to visit in Kisumu, the personalities. I, I, I blogged about DJs, musicians <laughs> coming up. Then there was a, a creative economy function organized by the state. Then uh, I inboxed, I remember I inboxed, it's funny, but I inboxed Big Ted. Mm-hmm. Out of nowhere, I just inboxed Big Ted that I'm doing this and this. I've seen uh, there's a creative economy conference coming up in Nairobi, but I'm based in Kisumu. Then uh, also, uh, when you came, because they came to source for the creatives for that event, and I wrote a story on my blog. What event are you talking about? Just to catch on for you. Uh, the a creative economy. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, conference, creative economy creative conference. Creative economy conference. conference. That okay. was the first creative economy conference that was happening in Kenya. Mm-hmm. So I wrote a story when they came to fish, uh, creatives within Kisumu. Then I shared with him that blog link. Then I told him this is what I wrote. Then he just told me, Ted, gave me your number. You are joining. That the event, conference. the wow. conference, our all week conference, uh-huh. uh, we, we, uh, it was attended by, it was the first high-end conference I attended, uh, it was, it was high-end, <laughs> just to say so. <laughs> so, um, when, 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 when that came in, I was telling you the genesis of KHP. Mm-hmm. Now, um, the conference, when uh, we attended the conference, when I was called, because we were the bloggers of that event. We were the, the hashtag guys of that event. Then Big Ted calls me in a podium and says, also here we have Ted, but now we, are two, we can't be two Ted's. One has to, because I'm small, I'm big, I'm yeah. Big Ted, he's becoming small Ted. Okay. That's how small Ted okay. photography came. Uh-huh. So uh, from there, I started branding my things as small, small Ted, Ted, small Ted, small Ted, small Ted, Ted, Ted photography. Okay. Okay. Then it came... People started challenging me because I was growing very fast. People started telling me, why do you call yourself small? They didn't know. I didn't have that time to explain the source of that name. So I told them, uh, I'll grow big. <laughs> <laughs> I'll grow big. Grow so big, after, okay. after that, um, uh, I saw there was need to not be small anymore, mm. but to be big. Then I came up. I said, what outfit can I have? that encompasses all the, because I was now actively doing digital marketing for different brands. I was doing uh, uh, 
content creation for different brands and that do not need that small name. So that's how we came up with Kisumu House of Photography and Communications. Ah, okay. Yeah, they actually, it's Kisumu, too. the registered name is Kisumu House of Photography and Communications Limited. Mm -hmm. So that's the, uh, the umbrella body that now I use uh, as my company uh, to do my affairs. It's quite it's quite catchy. Okay, it's some house of photography. photography. You are the house. Yeah, I'm if the I'm house. looking for anything, <laughs> I look for the yeah, house. Yeah. Wow. So what activities do you undertake at K K H P, H -P yeah. Media? K, no? K H P uh does a lot of things. K H P um handles PR. We do public relations, we do communication consultancy, we do web design, we do digital content creation. We do um, brand management and endorsements. Uh, we do photography and videography. So um, that's what we do majorly. We are um, a team. Actually, uh, in our team is around five people, but we work with a lot of people because uh, sometimes we get jobs that need a lot of human capital, that needs uh, a, a manpower to execute so you we, should recruit me i'm also uh, manpower <laughs> i will <laughs> well, well, yeah of, co of course you feel the bill mm -hmm. you, you uh, we we actually actually we don't have a voice of a person so we always source when client wants. so uh we we do a lot in terms of um content creation and uh, we've worked with um several of our organizations corporate entities individuals, SMEs, to, in those regards of PR, content creation, um, uh, digital marketing, we do all that. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what we do. We are based in Kisumu. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of activities that you undertake. So how do you ensure uh, that everything is running smoothly at the organization? It's challenging, but uh, uh, having having been in the background of media and all that, it all calls for planning. Occasionally, I have um, a number of, uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, events or assignments to do, but how I do that is nowadays I build client confidence in the company, not as me. That's, that, that, that's the, I think that's the, the wisdom yeah, I, that's I, I, yeah, I, 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 I had that I should not go as Ted because I shall have limited my ability. Mm. Uh, I shall so if I tell someone that I'm sending someone, they would not have the confidence. They would want to see me, but I still get that a lot, especially for individuals who still want me to attend the events as a person mm. because them they trust in what I do. Yeah. So, but I've really built uh, confidence in my team. I've told them there's something called he knows policy, uh, how we do our things, uh, the quality that is required. So, even if I'm not there, you will see me in the quality that is delivered to you. It's uh, satisfying uh, to see client happy at the end of the day. Um, but that's always our goal. Speaking of clients, Yes. Who are your target clients and why these specific ones? Um, our clients, we don't have a specific client. Mm. Uh, for us, because in all the industries, what we, what we do is required. It's the need that drives our client. Do they need what we offer? Do they need what we offer? We'll offer that. You know, creating content, all these people uh, need content. In everything they do, they need content. So we are not limited to any client. We also work with the individuals, NGOs, um, governments, uh, ministries. Uh, though it calls for, for, for you to work with certain entities, it needs you to do some things differently. That's where the company comes handy. There are things we can do that individual cannot do because they need those uh, company registration documents, they need care, they need all that for you to work with a bigger, for you to go big, you also have to have those things in place. 
Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's so much diversity in terms of clientele. So taking on such a huge responsibility to handle different kind of people, how has it affected your business in the long run? It has affected my business positively because uh, I'm not where I was before. So it has affected me in terms of getting uh, people trusting me that I'll be everywhere. But my team will be everywhere. Mm -hmm. So that's a positive yeah. effect. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What other challenges have you encountered in this journey and how did you get by? The challenges that we've, uh, we face are majorly sometimes clients who, who, who do not meet uh, their end of bargain. Mm -hmm. Like there's a client, you do a project, you've created your time, you've um, uh, used resources, but now they don't want to pay. Uh, they pay, uh, now we came up with a, a policy, a payment policy. Pay yeah, uh, Yeah, payment policy of uh, if it's not an LP, uh, LPO, then you commit uh, a percentage before, then during, then after. So the three-tier payment plan is saves us to, to, to not to spend on resources that are not going to be catered for by the client. Mm -hmm. So in the event that client fails to pay, even after delivery, you have uh, sorted your bills, running costs already, so you're not going to a loss. Also, you also have clients who take too long beyond beyond the agreed uh, payment terms. Then um, another challenge we find is um, oh, there's a, a lot of uh, lately there's a lot of theft of, uh, of, of of equipment. You have so much experience in the media industry. You have been able to rise up against different odds. What advice can you give to a young person freshly out of high school? or uh, campus and maybe they feel there is no hope for them to continue what advice do you have for them uh, my advice is two-faced number one when you are in when you are in college or in your formative years or your career identify your strength then commercialize your strength number two come out here and identify uh, people who can help you grow be humble. Humility is the best thing you can ever do. If you never humble, you can never learn those learn things. Them. So be humble. Accept corrections. Accept advices. Um, stand on the way of opportunity. Opportunities can pass the other side if you don't stand there. Yeah. Be, 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 be found there. Mm -hmm. Just be found there. Wow, wow, yeah. wow. Thank you so much, Teddy. I have loved this. You have so much that uh, you need to share. So how can we find you as we close up? Okay, we are Kisuma House of Photography. Funnily, there's no that house yet. <laughs> there's no physical house? Uh, there's no physical okay. house. Our email address is info at khpcommunications.com. Mm. Uh, we have digital at khpcommunications.com. We have, for me, Teddy Oyo at khpcommunications.com but we also have a gmail address which is khpcommunications at gmail.com so those are uh, and our numbers are 0712 um, 7293901 that's my personal number for business uh, 0712 7293901 that's the number that we do business with but uh, by and large, uh, we are always open for business. We do a lot with them, with people. You have had it. Find your strength and commercialize it. Be humble. Find mentors. They will lead you in the right way to start towards your success. This has been Youth in Action. I am Nyangweso Grenis. See you next time. This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it.